You're looking at a fast food wasteland, South Central Los Angeles. It's supersized with junk food joints and drowning in big gulps. And it's where opening a business has at times required negotiating with the Bloods and Crips. So it may but, seem well, like is, the last the place to be debating exactly, the best yeah, way to use thyme and sage in a sauce. And you can just smell how you know fragrant and different it is. Govin Armstrong is the chef at Post and Beam, perhaps the only restaurant in South LA with its own herb garden. For me, it was more like a coming home. You know, it's like I was born in Inglewood, uh, lived here for several years, and you know there was an opportunity to you know open up a flagship restaurant for the redevelopment of the mall. How could we say no to that? Armstrong is betting South LA residents will want his version of fast food. Show me something that you would yeah. make in this restaurant mm -hmm. that is affordable, that somebody at home could make. So what I'll show you is a simple uh, kale salad that we do. Right. Um, all the greens that we get, we buy from uh, the South Central Farmers Co-op. Um, they supply us with our kale, the collard greens that we use. The Farmers Co-op is right, the only one available yeah, yeah, yeah. to South LA residents. Yeah. 30% of whom live at below the federal poverty level. And what would this cost me to make? Two dollars. Like right, so this is highly affordable. Anyone yeah. should be able to make this. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. It's simple, it's quick, you know, it's all fresh ingredients, and it's good for you. You know, the one thing we do is uh, we massage the kale a little bit first with the dressing. Mm -hmm. That breaks it down a little, makes it easier to digest. Everyone and everything needs to be pampered here in L.A., even the kale. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> He whips it up in less time than you'd spend in a drive through That is really good. This tastes healthy, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Don't you feel better? Why don't you go away? Yeah, exactly. I'm done here. Regardless of the taste, are South LA residents ready to trade a Whopper for a kale salad? But the bottom line is you don't hear about a lot of people in this neighborhood putting kale and sliced apple and pomegranates together with yogurt. They're coming around. To make a salad. Oh, they're coming around. Maybe. The neighborhood is full of busy fast food places. It was so bad seven years ago, the city actually banned the opening of new ones, hoping obesity rates would drop. But a recent think tank study found that during the first four years of the ban, people here actually got fatter and ate more fast food. Do developers and investors pretty much think this is a neighborhood that only relies on fast food? You can't have a sit-down restaurant. They're not interested in it. Well, I don't think there were people that were willing to invest in that. They didn't trust or believe in the community, perhaps. But it's, you know, definitely one of those things that we believe, you know, that people need, you know, good options. You there build it, and they will come. Well, knock wood. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they've been coming. They certainly have been, yeah. We're going on our fourth year now, and things have been going extremely well, and we're, we're very happy. Post and Beam is one of L.A.'s top 100 restaurants, according to the L.A. Times one of just a handful in all of South L.A. Cheers. Bragging rights you, nice owner Brad Johnson is proud of. It's not every day that you see a restaurant of this caliber mm -hmm. squeezed between a, a Sears on one side and a Walmart on the other. Sure. He decided to build here after a developer convinced him South L.A. residents wanted good food and would pay for it. But it's not just about making money. Why is this place so important? You know, I think it's important for a number of reasons. You have to be careful as a black entrepreneur um, when you wave the flag too proudly of black owned because to some that says, oh, you know, it's exclusive, it's not for the rest of us. Um, but what's necessary is that African Americans have to recognize that our culture is important. And in order for our culture to survive, black businesses, which represent a part of our culture, have to be patronized because when they're not, they disappear. Black neighborhoods disappear. And then we don't have that. And I think, you know, we've, we've seen that happen in neighborhoods like Harlem and neighborhoods like Oakland and neighborhoods like this one. But from the looks of it, Post and Beam may be changing that. Some Angelinos are traveling to the South Side for the first time, pulling up a stool at what some call the Black Cheers, and they like it. But it's almost like sometimes people are surprised. Wow, they're really friendly here. What, what, what did you think? Don't get me going. No, we're having a good time, man. We're enjoying it. We're drinking wine. We're watching the Lakers. You know, we're right. having a great time. While Post and Beam won't wipe out obesity in South L.A. or bridge all of L.A.'s cultural gaps, it's trying to change habits one bite at a time and give generations of residents who've stuck it out here in South L.A. something they deserve and now demand.
Do you, right? get, do you get that a lot? We do get that. Uh -huh. I, I think people are, you know, they're anxious to show off that something like this has happened in their neighborhood. Michael Oku, Al Jazeera, Los Angeles.